thanks so much indeed for joining us for this, our season opener, season six opener. And rather fittingly, we are discussing the season. Look at that. It's all, it's, it's synergy working together at the moment. When you talk in the season, there's only one venue that springs to mind. It's bringing together so many great events from so many different backgrounds as well. The boss of the Coca-Cola Arena is alongside us here. No stranger to these sofas. Uh, Mark Yankar, always good to see you. Good to see you, Tom. Um, let's, well, again, so it's been that sort of recurring theme. I mean, you're, it's not your first rodeo. You've been in this part of the world for a long time. You've been worked, working in, in events for, for a while. I mean, have you ever seen it as busy as it is at the moment or certainly leading up to the end of the year? Short answer is no. Yeah. Even the summer was crazy. We, we closed for a couple of weeks for some preventative maintenance. Staff went on holidays and I think 19th of August it went, mm. just the light switch went back on in terms of the live event space. It's been incredible. So what? So why is that? Is that just because more and more artists, more and more events want to come to town? They're looking for spaces, they're looking for opportunities here. I'm trying to work out why this year is busier than anyone previous. I think as a city expands, obviously the population has grown, the demographic yeah. of, of, of nationalities is, has increased as well. And I think it's sort of that, that um, mentality of Dubai that everything is moving at a fast pace and all ships rise in, mm. in the tide. So, um, you know, it's, it's activities, there's new venues, there's up and coming artists, mm. there's abilities for artists that are perhaps TikTok stars last year are, are making potential arena performances this yeah. year. It's, it's a different world. Now, Mark, you know I'm personally excited because I've already stalked you about this, about the basketball games happening at the Coca-Cola Arena. Mm. You got the cheerleaders and the big screens and the whole vibe. It is incredible. Tell us all about that. So Dubai's first international sports franchise is calling Coca-Cola Arena home, Dubai Basketball. They're competing in the ABBA League, which is sort of men's professional basketball from the Balkan states. Uh, incredible opportunity for the venue and, and the city to finally call a team home. Gives us 18 games, 18 home games a season. Uh, majority of the games on a Sunday, which is fantastic. Yeah. Family friendly time of, of 7 p.m. And, and it just brings that whole element of, of basketball fans, sports fans, sneaker heads, live entertainment into one. Let's talk music for a moment. I have already spoken to you about Kasabian. I've got my Kasabian tickets. I'm very excited. But what other big concerts have we got to look forward to at the arena? Well, all you need to do is sort of look at the, the arena website. But, uh, you know, a couple of ones that really sort of stand out is uh, you've got at the end of uh, November, the streets, mm -hmm. they're sort of they're making their uh, they debut in, in Dubai. Uh, in December, we have 30 Seconds to Mars, Ricky Martin, uh, and the list goes on and on. I feel like Lane's just got no, his diary know, out yeah, here. Yeah, I like, didn't know half of down. these artists were coming. I'm, I'm even more excited now. And I've been hearing on the grapevine that there's, um, there's, there's a big announcement that's going to be made as well. Yeah, so last time we were here, we promised we'll finally make an announcement on the show. Oh. And uh, we keep our promise. And is it time now? Or? We're doing it. Go for it. Are we doing this now? Right now. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. So uh, there is a very, very famous IP called Coke Studios. Mm. It's sort of been all over the world. There's Coke Studios Africa, Egypt, Pakistan. And in 2022, we had one edition. And I'm very happy to announce that it's returning back to Dubai on the 8th of December and it is Coke Studios 2024. Wow, who's being featured in that? Well, that you just have to uh, pre-register <laughs> oh, and go into the on. website. Maybe the next time you invite me guys, I can talk about the actual <laughs> artist lineup, but, I like um, that. but yeah. Given so much is going on, um, and given the fact that you know, you've got some massive artists coming down, you've got the sports element now, almost like a sort of weekly or, or dual weekly occurrence, uh, no shortage of big brands wanting to use your space as well for big launches, etc. How, are, how do you balance it these days as well? Because, I mean, I could, you, I'm assuming you could sell out two arenas at the moment, given the amount of interest that's been generated. Uh, short answer is it's all about sort of the supply and demand. Um, as important as to obviously live shows and dim different demographics, whether it's Southeast Asian yeah. content or Arabic content or, or sports, it's really important to be able to use the space and, and sort of showcase the best what Dubai has. And, and you've got some incredible sort of business summits, conferences, yeah. forums coming through, in, including sort of one called Sephora, yeah. which is basically imagine the world's biggest Sephora store and multiply it by 10 and put it into an arena with <laughs> guest speakers, activations, brand launches. It's over three days, not one day, not two days, but three days. It's going to be out of this world. And there are going to be any surprise performances there? Uh, I guess you have to uh, 
buy tickets. Mark, come, come it on. <laughs> I need the scoop here. But what are you looking forward to? So whether it's the Mega Campus Summit or the, what did you call it? Sephoria? Sephoria. But Sephorium, that makes sense. Sephorium, what are you looking forward to next? How creative can you guys go? Day off, probably. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to next summer, a couple of, a couple of days off. Uh, listen, it's, it's for those that know me, it's sort of been, um, and Tom, you've known this for a very long time, the ambition to get a, a sports franchise team to call Dubai home and home in Coca Cola has sort of been that dream with basketball. Hopefully we can do it with ice hockey in sort of the next two years. Um, and to really showcase the talent. We'll love to see sort of um, more and more international talent coming through, but more talent that is sort of either caused by home or is our nationals to be able to perform on an arena level. Let's wrap things up by talking tickets because it seems like everyone just talks tickets these days. I don't know what o Oasis have done, but every, it's all about pre-booking these days and then getting your hands on whatever, etc. cetera. Um, given that there is going to be, as you say, population is going in, get a lot more people flying in to go to events here at the moment. What's your advice to, to our viewers when it comes to, to buying tickets? Because as we know, you know, there is a tradition here of leaving it to the last minute. <laughs> uh, so listen, you're absolutely right. So this market, what we would normally see is 50 to 60% of all the tickets sold in the last week of the event. That is shifting, thank goodness. Mm. That is shifting to obviously much earlier on. But the biggest recommendation is buy from authorized outlets only. So when we're talking about the UAE, it's essentially obviously the venue websites, uh, Platinum List, Ticketmaster or Virgin Tickets. Anything else is a no-go. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, getting the next scoop from you. We'll Thank see you at the guys. next basketball game. Yes. Now it is time to get to know our guest co-host a little bit better before we let her go as well. So Lane, I'm gonna pass over to you for DXB and 60. Yes, one of my favorite things to do. Farah, obviously you know it goes very quick, so we want to know a little bit more about you in 60 seconds. It's gonna be a quick one. Right, right? I'm ready. Ready-ish. Yeah? Ready ready. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. What is the one misconception about journalism, would you say? Oh, a misconception. They're all sneaky and trying to get one up on you. We mostly just want to tell the story, right? <laughs> so if the story isn't great, hey, that's your fault. <laughs> that is, that is. Now, you're a legend in the game. You've interviewed so many people. If you could interview anyone, dead or alive, who would that be? Oh, hmm, I mean, I ha yeah, I've been very lucky. There's been lots of interviews. I think I would right now say Taylor Swift because she's, I mean, big fan. And her, every story she has just explodes, it goes massive. Brilliant. What was your first job? It was here. It was in Dubai. It was at Golf News at a magazine called Scene. What's your motto in life and work? Oh, be nice to everybody because everyone can come back and help you. You can help everyone. Never know. Um, do you prefer writing or speaking on your podcast? Oh, I do a lot more speaking on the podcast now, but writing is my always my first love. What's a superpower that you wish you had? Hmm, read minds. <laughs> and I'd be able to get that story. <laughs> <laughs> and the last question, why Dubai? Why Dubai? Why anywhere else? It's been home for so long. I love it here. And it's always changing. So it's never boring. Never boring. No. Farah, uh, never a dull moment when you join us here on the show. So thanks so much indeed for being with Thank us. Thank you very thanks much for, for having all me. your uh, help in planning our agenda moving forward. And of course, Mark, thanks so much indeed for being with us as well. Um, you're not going anywhere. You stay there. Why? Because we've got a worldie coming your way in just a few moments' time. Piano, Ryan Gibb, pure class, next.